choosing the right SD card. I will explain all the different signs on a SD card. If you are not interested in all the information, here a short summary. For JPEG photography, go with an at least 16GB class 10, 30MB per second card. For RAW photography and Full HD videography, go with a at least 32GB U1 45MB per second card. For 4K videography, go with a at least 64GB U3 60MB per second card. And for everyone who is interested in more information, let's get started. There are a lot of different brands for SD cards. I certainly recommend you to take one from an actual brand. Don't save a few euro and get a no name one. The SD card itself has a lot of different numbers and signs and all of them are important. Let's start with the memory space. There is no reason to get a SD card smaller than 16 GB. I made a little comparison on the price per GB for different sizes. And you can see that nowadays the price is pretty stable at around 40 cent per gigabyte, except of the 16 gigabyte that is more expensive. But what size do you need? For normal JPEG photography, I recommend 16 gigabyte or 32. But as I said, the price difference is so small that you should consider 32. For full HD videography, you should take 32 or 64 gigabyte. For 4K videography, you should have at least 64 gigabyte. Let's talk about speed. There is this big megabyte per second number on it and everyone only looks on this number. But this is a mistake. Let me explain to you why. Let's talk about taking video, what is much more critical than photography since it requires more space. Depending on the resolution and format you use, the video will have a different bitrate. My Canon 80D for example can record in MOV or MP4 and in all I or IPB. MOV and all I has a bitrate of 90,000 kilobit per second. MP4 and IPB only 30,000 kilobit per second. Equal to 90 megabit per second and 30 megabit per second. Does that mean that for MOV and all I, I need a card with 90 megabyte per second and for MP4 and IPB 30 megabyte per second? No, it doesn't. For two reasons. First of all, the camera shows megabit per second and the SD card megabyte per second. But megabit and megabyte is not the same. Almost everyone makes this mistake. One megabit per second means 1000 kilobit per second are equal to 0.125 megabyte per second. So eight megabit per second are one megabyte per second. Means 90 megabit per second are equal to 11.25 megabyte per second. Would that mean that I can simply go with a 15 megabyte per second card? No, because the number on the SD card is only the reading speed, not the writing speed. Means, for example, the speed the card has when you copy files from your SD card onto your computer, but not the speed the card has when you record videos on it. This is shown by those signs. Here is a table that shows what writing speed a card has with the different symbols. To use my sample from just now, the 90,000 kilobit per second are equal to 11.25 megabyte per second. So I would need a U3 card to be able to store the footage on the SD card. But actually I have a U1 card and it still works. An interesting comparison, this 60 megabyte per second card is three times faster than this 80 megabyte per second card. So please don't get fooled by the reading speed. Definitely never buy a card below class 10 because class 10 is already so cheap. On my Sony A6300, I can record 4K with 60 megabit per second with the U1 card. But for the 100 megabit per second option, I have to use a U3 card. Now about this last sign. It shows the bus interface, which is also about writing speed. The cards I own are all UHS-1. Most of them nowadays are. So as I said in the beginning, for JPEG photography, only go with at least 16 GB, class 10, 30 MB per second. For RAW photography and Full HD videography, go with at least 32 GB, U1, 45 MB per second. For 4K videography, go with at least 64 GB, U3, 60 MB per second. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. If you have any further questions, just write in the comments. See you!